Let's check. Grab it here again. So now we're finally coming to the end of the gigabit Ethernet installation. Um, pretty much everything's wrapped up on the external. Well, all the external cabling's done. The coming through windows, going through doors is all fixed. And um, now I've been making some uh, covers for to protect the connectors outside. And uh, now we have to do some more. I thought I had enough cables, but now I just purchased a whole pile of um, more Cat6 cables. And I mean, this video will just go through a few steps of installation that are remaining, and um, then we'll do some performance tests and hope to call it a day. So, let's do that. Okay, finished printing out one of the um, covers for the outside. So, let's. Um, Get it off the print bed and I'll show you a few that have already been installed and get this one in place. So anyway, I got three of the covers already installed. So it um, both hides away the cables and then protects the cable ends from dust and, and um, moisture and stuff. So here's the next one ready to go in. See, it's cold today. It's very close to zero Celsius. Let's hope we can get this in place. Quick, because I want to go inside and drink coffee. that protection on. So anyway, here's the switch connected to the window through foot and then we need to go from this one to the entertainment center. As you see, my wife is trying to hide the technology. Actually, so, so which looks better? The, the switch or the rose? I think the switch looks better. So I uh, need to run this cable first. Hide it a little bit behind the furniture and stuff. To get the entertainment center. And I'm probably gonna swap this one out. I think that's too short. So I actually bought more cables so to go and get a, like a one 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 plus maybe I think I had a one meter cable, so now for one meter or not. So I 
has a little bit more. And then I was thinking one would have ports here so one can actually connect other stuff around this area or sit in the chair and connect the laptop or something. So, anyway, we have a suitable half meter cable. Oh, wait, 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 so a little bit of light. Okay, it comes through the window. Crap there. doesn't matter um, what port you use, these are all uniform. I mean, in the older switches you actually had an uplink port. Which had, a, had a meaning, but on pretty much all modern stuff you just can put it in whatever port you want. And um, then we will continue with this 7.5 meter cable. Starts to get it rooted. So now it's the um, one of the switches I'm going to install, and this is the one of the more extreme ones in, in um, counting ports. And this is going to go into our um, entertainment center setup, so I have to figure out how to um, position it first, and then I'll. Haven't been showing much connecting client devices into the network, so I thought I'd actually take a little bit of video about um, how you connect um, Ethernet cables into the switches and the devices into the switches. And um, yeah, let's get into it. So now I've got the switch bolted onto the back of the cabinet, and um, I'm putting these individual um, network cables. For each device. So I've already connected in Xbox, PlayStation, TV, and um, receiver. And yeah, the TV box, but a satellite box. Well, like not a satellite cable box. And then uh, the TV. The only problem is on the TV. I don't really know where where the Ethernet jack is. I can't remember, it was a while ago that I installed the TV. So I'm going to have to actually use um, this inspection camera that I bought some time ago from Lidl to take a peek behind the TV and see if I can find it. And then uh, of course each device, I need to go through each device and make sure that they switch to the Ethernet uh, or, or disconnect the uh, wireless connection because I think most, not all of them switch automatically over to Ethernet. But um, as we see, there's traffic at least uh, leaving the port, so so it um, recognizes the devices. Though. Except for the TV that's not yet connected in. So I'll try and get that fixed now. Okay, that's the rest of the or the TV connected. That wasn't easy to find. That's a very illogical place. I kind of separated from the HDMI um, connector, so. It wasn't that easy to find, but but I used my feelings and the um, inspection camera to actually locate, or I used the inspection camera to locate, and then I used the finger feel to um, get the cable in place. And um, now that now it's all the entertainment, and then the cable continues to another section outside. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty much done here. Yeah, so I'll just give the quick speed test from um, the um, YouTube studio. Let's see what we get. Oh, I need to check. 
change to this one. Oh, let's try and run this. Oh, it's actually a bit slower today than it's usually. Usually I've been able to get into like 450. Oh, that's, ah, it's not that bad. 400 megabits. So, what was that? Okay, let's try and um, do a test on um, the office then. Yeah. Of course, here I wouldn't expect it to go um, any higher than 400. No, but now, now we're getting up to 424. Ah, there's something uh, low. that's obviously load on the internet because usually I get 450. And now the also the response time uh, went down, and I mean this this location is like further away from the internet. It's a couple of switches in between so um, yeah so th this is um, now it's um, my local time it's like evening time so prime time for people to use the internet so I would expect it not to be the fastest time to test but over 400 again so that's um, reasonable okay now I'll take the workstation that is pretty much the furthest away in the network or behind the most switches. Let's see what we got. Yeah, now it's, now it's clocking closer to 450. Oh, it took even over 450. Wow, 460. Ah, that's the thing, there's a dynamic load now at this time of the, of the day where I'm living. It's probably like the load fluctuates uh, in prime time for using the internet. 8.30 in the evening. And pretty much everybody's doing stuff. Well, anyway, that's the result I get here. So not that bad as a roundup. So, welcome to the um, Garden Shed YouTube Studio Workshop. And guess what we have here? Or are I supposed to guess? Ha <laughs> ha! Gigabit Ethernet! Suddenly coming through the wall. So, and then... Um, put in a extra cable and then an extension so we can actually connect these two together like that okay I don't know how well one can see not the best filming angle I suppose but anyway now we need to um, get my raspberry pi actually back into place because I actually have Board. So we put these are just for our mouse and keyboard wires. Just plug those back in again. And then I have um, a power over ethernet switch and I'm going to actually buy a power over ethernet hat for this but it hasn't come yet so I'm going to have to use a conventional power supply. And then of course one would ask why would I power this power over ethernet if I already have power here. Ah, because the because one can. That's just the point. Oh, it's into tech. Oh, let's see. Put this one underneath. That one. Cold in here, so the wires get a bit stiff. Okay, we'll, uh, have to tie those together. So let's open up the network cable. This has a few. Oh, did I have any 
until it unplugs here. Summer it would be so much nice. Well, now it's winter. Actually, have have a bit of a chill. I do have a little bit of heating, in, but it won't warm up in a half an hour. Murphy's low, you just have those, those tie ties and then oh, it's not going to be long enough. Switch and that comes with a relatively large power brick. It also has to deliver the power. But it's really difficult. Not the nicest computer rack set up. The switch is that it somewhat doesn't have a clear status. Let all of those cables get so far. Oh, oh. It's working. So the incoming Ethernet is connected. HDMI outputs. Thinking of getting a smaller monitor in addition to the TV I have here. What else? No, what is the brain? Oh, okay. Internet coil. If I just leave that tied up. Try to pull through.
So I've got very small starter slots. And then we plug the power in. There we go. And let's see if we got pitch or not. Oh, but it's on HDMI input 2. So I think that might not be correct. I might have to, the TV input will probably have to be changed. No, it was HDMI too. Because now it's shot. So, good to know. Raspberry Pi. It's sitting there, precariously on top of cables. And then here's the power over Ethernet, which I will use just because I happen to have it. I was actually trying to think of also having this as a power over Ethernet lab. So I'm going to buy some um, or acquire some uh, power over Ethernet equipment, like I don't know, cameras and Wi-Fi. Uh, I would like to have a Wi-Fi in here going directly into the gigabit network because this is a metal metal container so basically wi-fi coverage is not very good so i'd like to have a wi-fi access point in here which i can actually fix very easily okay so now let's see on to the test um, if we actually have a um, according to the status we do Yeah, put an IP address at least. Store YouTube. Oh, I don't want to stop playing other people's videos. No, thank you. Alright, my politics in this video. Thank you. So, anyway. Looks like we have a working um, internet, you know, with all the stuff that comes with it. Yes. So now Ethernet is a uh, gigabit Ethernet is all through the house and extended to the um, garden workshop. And um, you can't do that with Wi-Fi. Don't forget Wi-Fi. Not coming up to one gig. And um, well, I was thinking I was on. They probably don't have a copyright violation theme for that, so I can actually think I'll do it. It should work the script that tests the broadband speed if we just. Search engine, but that's a oh, not to switch. The, so look, let's take away some of this notification garbage. Switch to English, and then we just I'm, I'm not sure if this will um, work with the script, uh, Java script or whatever they've used to program it. So we'll take a chance. Maybe it, well, it doesn't run on Raspberry. No, it seems to work happily. Oh. I'm not sure what the load on the internet is right now. And then of course Raspberry Pi, one has to notify, notice that Raspberry Pi itself is a limiting factor. And by the way, I don't actually know if that... If this black cable I've actually decided to use is Cat6, I'll have to actually look at that in more detail. So it might be that this this black cable I'm using internally is not Cat6 even if, you know, even if Cat5 will do it. Okay. So 260 megabits per second. Oh, I 
I, I would like to call it because I'm not so sure um, what speed the um, Raspberry Pi can maintain on this specific test because this is probably very CPU bundles. So, um, but I mean, you know, <laughs> to, I mean, I don't think I have to complain. 260 megabits per second yeah. tested by a Raspberry Pi. So, so let's make an assumption that it's actually higher than that. So uh, in, in reality, so, uh, yeah, that's good enough for anything that I'm going to do in a garden workshop. I can I could even stream 4K from here because that would just be like 50 megabits per second, 50 to 60 megabits per second. So I could actually I could actually build a stream. Anyway, that's the that's for that part. I just thought I'd show this as an exciting cap to the whole initiative because the interesting enough the cable that comes into here is at the end point of one of the segments that I built in the house. So it was the last last section to put in. Well, anyway, I got a little bit of an announcement to make. Um, when we were was running this project, then I, I purchased some uh, TP-Link switches um, for the network. And I have um, one segment of the network is fully equipped with Netgear switches. And the other, other one is a blending of Netgear switches and um, TP-Link and on the link that where I have both TP-Link and, and Netgear I've been seeing uh, a little bit of variation in the um, speed performance. So what I intend to do now is I'm going to uh, I am going to replace the um, TP-Link um, switches uh, on the segment that doesn't go hasn't got uh, all the equipment Netgear and, uh, and based on my testing I think that will clear up the um, performance issues that I've been having on the network segment. Well, that was a long journey, but um, I think we can actually call that a wrap. So I have a gigabit networking running through the house to segment into two different, divided into two different segments and um, everything's been pretty much working now for several weeks. I haven't had any any kids screaming at me or my wife screaming at me that the network doesn't work, except for the um, few occasions where mobile phones still keep on dropping off the Wi-Fi network, but that's not my fault. But anything that's been connected physically to the network hasn't been failing. Uh, as I just made the notification, I'm going to actually move to a purely Netgear network, so I'm going to be taking out the um, TP-Link um, switches and replacing them with Netgear and uh, maybe get a more uniform performance. Um, still um, discussing with our ISP about the speed. I mean, uh, I've actually concluded that we have a half a gigabyte um, uh, internet connection. And, uh, you know, they, they call it this some gold plus whatever. But, you know, I work on that. <laughs> ISPs are ISP. <laughs> So, but I actually, in, in all the performance measurements that I've done and the um, capacity uh, consumption tests that I've done for myself, then I, the, the, yeah, I, I won't be able to even get over the half a gigabyte right now, at least not going out, not coming in and going out to the internet. So, so it, it'll be more like a coolness factor to get the one gig, and I think I'll I'll fit that in some somewhere down the line. But anyway, if you like this video, then um, consider subscribing. Um, hit the bell icon to get further notifications. I'm quite sure I'll be making a tweak here or there um, on, to the on the network or related to this network. And, um, you know, tell other people if they get interesting to dump some of their capacity off the wireless LAN and get it on the wired LAN. I can, I can recommend it. Uh, the, the stability of the equipment that we've been having in the house has been a lot better now. Um, over the over the weeks that I've been running this. So anyway, I'll see you in the next big series.